milestone, which is to do with personalization. It's, it's dynamic personalization. So as you, as you interact with a website or other kind of interfaces, there's a dynamic response, the feedback information that is relevant to you. It's really scary because who's, you know, if Google started doing that in a major way, I'm being influenced by an algorithm, by a mathematical formula, and by, by how many people like the same thing. It's really scary. So I can be quite well informed, but also ignorant at the same time. There's a whole moral thing going on there, which is way beyond today. But I think quality content is lost in the communication because there's too much noise. And if we look at Netflix as an example, 75% of their business is based on recommendation. 75%. It's not people going looking for a film. It's how Netflix recommend films to people. And they're so successful. 75% of their business. It would be fantastic if 75% of our business came from recommendation because we'd be doing an awful lot more ambitious. And I love this slide that Boris from Film Master put out the cinema com. I'm really excited when I get an email from my cinema exhibitor said no one ever. I, honestly, I have never had a response from any email. I've sent millions and millions of people going, Mark, that's the most exciting email I've ever received. We need to make sure what we send out is exciting. A recommendation, I've told you what it does with Netflix, but Film Master are working with Samsung on, on uh, VOD systems on TV. And they've grown, they've grown um, consumption of film by 50%, literally within two weeks of going live. And they work with ProSieben, which is a big t German TV station, and they've done the same thing with 23% growth on VOD, literally within a week. And the models they're now introducing in, into cinemas in the UK and other countries, very conservatively, we're looking at a 5% emissions growth, incremental growth. Uh, very, very low cost, and I'll take 5% emissions growth any day of the week. And this chart shows just how here, on February the 6th, when they ran this trial proceeding, there is a film, I can't even pronounce it, I don't know what it is, right? And they put, made it go live on the recommendation engine, you can see what happened to this film instantly, it went live as a recommendation. Personalised recommendation dynamically, stunned. done. So what Boris does here, he has, he, he uses recommendation versus loyalty programs. Although loyalty programs are generally very expensive to put in, they are, um, they take a high resource because you need people to run them. It's like a big, big engine, right? And it, it, data gathering can take years because if you, if, if you have customers who only go three times a year, how do you know what films are like if they go three times a year? It can take you five years. You need at least 15 to 20 data points on preferences before you know what people like. The only people in a loyalty program that you'll know are your frequent cinema guys, and they're going anyway. And they know more about film than you do, by the way. And they also, because they actually also pay to go, and we don't, we're very lucky. <laughs> so this thing works very quickly, and it's, it's, it's way under the 10th. Um, it's a fraction of the cost, the return on investment is very really high. I like that sort of thing. So, so they, they've deployed in Empire Cinemas in the UK with, with, a, with a Facebook app, and uh, it's really straightforward, really simple, and it's, it's expanding onto their website. And it's a game. And the gamification is a word that I do bang on about, and it's basically just a word. But what it says, you're engaging people into content and other activities where they play something and enjoy playing it for the fun of doing it. And in the process, they become educated in other things, like what films they like, what dynamic, you know, we deliver dynamic content to them that they will find interesting. So it's kind of like education via the side door, right? Because you hear them on head on going, I think you'll like this, they won't listen to you. And it's a simple game, you're sort of comparing this and that, and you share it with friends, and you win points, and points mean prices, of course, you get tickets. But so, so how, how does this, what does it deliver? Well, it's quite interesting. Um, we have a 17% click rate, which is fantastic. 
Um, and the, the thousands, the many thousands of people who played this once, just once, we know, 70% of them, we know exactly what films they like, instantly, not only in the past, but now in the future. So now I can talk to those people in a way I've never talked to before, because I know what they like. Very, very clever. And one person shares with another. So in other words, it's kind of a growing path of, of, of gathering new customers. And about 30% of all players that play every week are brand new people. So this curve is really good. So you grow, you're going fishing, if you like, in social media. You're building up a, a really good profile on existing and potential customers. And these guys are also um, implementing in Pathé in, in Holland. Which is sort of a, it's a very, very smart thing when it comes to the CRM system that drives your communication. Now, Film Master have a communication system, I'm sure a lot of you have database systems, but maybe it probably is some of the best I've ever seen. Uh, they're a New Zealand based company, and they really do provide a single view of, of, of a customer. Right? You, need, you need to have the heart of it, it's like the motherboard. Right? It's, it's, an, it's fantastic, and it's what you do with it, Matt, but you need to have the engine. Provide a single view of the customer. And it's kind of like having a spider's web. If, you're, if I, we're like a spider and a big spider's web, every time a potential customer touches our web, we need to know and we need to do something with it. So we need to be listening and responding all the time. We don't often have very good devices out there that actually can pick up what customers are doing. And what, what Movio do, they take all the data that there is, all the touch points, and this is not all of them, but there's is a good proportion here. And they, they, pull, they pull the data in a way that has been predefined so you can actually target people properly. And therefore, then, it helps you send out information to people that you know that they're like. <coughs> and then this obviously drives upselling and cross-selling and all kinds of other things, which is a really interesting thing to do. So whether it's Movio or whether it's another company like Movio, it doesn't matter. The point is, the motherboard needs to have a really, really, really good CRM system behind it. Right, I'm going to talk about pricing, which is one of my pet projects at the minute. So, death by price point. I call it. And actually, I think we're taking our customers on an unexpected journey. Right, and this is, it will really start it. But look at all these choices we're giving customers. Right, all I want to do is see a bloody film. Right? So, oh, hang on, IMAX, uh, oh, hang on, what's, what's extreme? I don't know, 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 I don't what the hell is 11 one? Do I go before 5 to save money or do I go after 5 and pay more? Well, you know, what are all these cheap days that are going on? What's an off peak and what's peak? You know, what's a family ticket? I mean, good God. You know. And every time I go, I'll have this, I'll have this, the price just goes up and up and up and up. It's like going on Ryanair. You know, they, will, they will charge you to go to the toilets on the plane. Right? And at some point, I'm sure that's going to happen. God forbid we ever do that in cinema. So for the people who are awake, I will, here's the equation of the number of permutations there are in pricing. NPR equals N something or other, divided by N minus R brackets something. I don't know what the exclamation was, I think it's just like OW. You know, big number. But there are literally <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of permutations. Now, of course, we are moving at such a speed that our customers don't know this stuff. But we're trying, we're trying, oh, we're being really good, we're giving choice. But there's choices they don't understand. And then when it comes to our ticket pricing, oh my God, right? So this is, this is a real example. This is, this is a cinema in the UK, and that was their price list. So, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Shit. Right, so, so I read, I've redone this. I mean, I've completely restructured their pricing to do this. It's a bit clearer, right? And I've, I've cut through about 500 price points and got to these. And now there's a proper structure in every similar in the circuit that they have 
driven by the add out standard price or peak price, as you might call it, based on disposable income in the local area. So there's logic. It's not what other cinemas charge, it's what you should charge in relation to your customer base. There's a question actually whether we need a saver price at all, off peak, as some of you call it, because actually people aren't available to go often during the day in non school holidays, so why bother charging less? But a good pricing structure, and uh, this is real work, this is literally just the stuff that I've delivered in the last couple of weeks. This is, this is a good structure that allows you then to create simplified communication. Right? Even then, I'm struggling whether I've ever done this, seriously. But at least talks about, we're now doing special prices for teenagers, we now do Super Saver Tuesday and Orange Wednesdays. And already, I think, we were beginning to stretch it. <coughs> And then we have a kids' club, and we have a seniors' club, and you can see where it starts proliferating. It gets quite complicated. And then this, this poster on the right, does anybody speak Azerbaijani? Okay. So I'm working with a company in, in, in Azerbaijan, in Baku, and um, we've introduced just a, a much simpler kind of pricing concept. But basically what they had was on the completely other extreme as that other one I just showed you. They had two prices just two, um, and one was for 2D and one was 3D, and that was it, two prices. Every day, any film, two prices. Wow, that was quite interesting. So of course I've come in and just messed it all up by going, hey, you know, I think you need to price for families, but, and this is in one particular cinema in Baku that's really struggling because they, uh, it's a really strong family market and it's not very well-off people, so we've introduced family prices, and we've also introduced um, a saver day and child tickets and that kind of thing. So pricing is a fundamental part of what we do, and I think we still have a lot of learning to do in what we do with pricing, and it is as important for a small cinema as it is for a massive cinema company, because each cinema, as we all know, operates and lives in a local environment. And then I just, and many years ago, 2002, oh, gee whiz. Um, when I was at VIEW, I thought, hey, I know I've got an idea for cinema pricing. I'll do a standby ticket, like, a, like an aeroplane thing, right? So what you did, and this was with lastminute.com, which was very, very big then. It's not quite so big now, but view something lastminute.com was kind of an interesting proposition, which is, I know, I'll go to the cinema. It's that last minute decision in London. And this was in London where ticket prices are astronomical. So what I did was, I did a deal with last minute, and we sold cheap cinema tickets. But they only were valued for one day, use it or lose it, and it was not film, you didn't buy a ticket for a film, you bought a ticket for a seat. So if we had a popular film that you couldn't get in, tough luck. It's quite interesting. It, it becomes, it, it's past the cinema, but not to a film. It's, it detaches the film from the price. And it worked really interestingly and very well. It was a bit of a cumbersome system back then because obviously the technology wasn't quite the same. But it ran for, for a good many years. But the reason I, I mention that is that there's another company who shared the stage with me in Show East. And I've known them for three or four years, actually. A company called Zeta Pricing. They're actually based in Europe as well. But they're, they, they've come from their base, their main base is in Chile, in Latin America. And they have a really good idea. It's about incremental divisions through dynamic pricing. I'm, not, I'm going to try and, try and do this. Right, so potential customers lost is where, where maybe like the price is too high, particularly you actually people don't go because the price is too high. And also, um, we, if we don't charge enough, we have potential loss of revenue. But essentially, by optimizing pricing we may, and make it dynamic to suit people and demand, we can actually get more people in the cinema and actually make more money. Now, you're going, oh my God, that sounds really complicated. Well, it kind of is, in terms of the maths behind.